On today's show, take a look at Tesla's worst nightmare. Autonomy could slash the number of cars on the road and a look at how all those Euro vans are selling in the U.S. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for February 10 of 2015. Take a look at Tesla's worst nightmare. Meet the Quant F and listen to these specs. Driving range of 500 miles, top speed of 180 miles an hour, and zero emissions. Pretty impressive for a four-seater EV. This beautiful sedan featuring gullwing doors is powered by what they call a nano flow cell. It's kind of like a battery or a fuel cell where you recharge it by adding new electrolyte. So it can be refueled in a matter of minutes. Batteries not needed. The Quantef concept makes its debut at the Geneva show. Speaking of beautiful cars that go fast with a minimal environmental footprint, we have learned when the Acura NSX will go into production. Auto Forecast Solution says job one starts this October at Honda's Performance Manufacturing Center in Ohio. Honda is scouring its facilities in Ohio to find the 100 workers with the highest manufacturing skills to make the NSX. Are we on the verge of seeing traffic jams become a thing of the past? An in-depth study from the University of Michigan suggests that autonomous cars and ride sharing could slash the number of cars on the road by 43%. It says average ownership in the U.S. would drop from 2.1 cars per household to only 1.2 cars. But it would also nearly double the average miles driven per car from today's 11,600 miles on up to 20,400 miles. The study is titled potential impact of self-driving vehicles on household vehicle demand and usage. And it says this represents the high end of how many cars might be eliminated. Still to come, hey, what about all those new European vans being sold in the U.S. market? How are they doing? Ford's latest stability control makes sure that you don't get egg on your face. And should the V versions of the ATS or CTS go all-wheel drive? Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, and by Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. The commercial van segment in the U.S. is undergoing the biggest change in over half a century. So how are the new vans selling, especially compared to the old ones? Well, let's start with the old. According to Ward's data, the Chevy Express was the top-selling old van in January, hitting 3,500 units, and followed closely by the Ford Econoline, which was just a few hundred units behind. The GMC Savannah came in at number three, but sold less than half of the Econoline. And the Ram Cargo van rounds out the list, selling only 1,100 units. Amongst the new commercial Euro vans, The Ford Transit came out on top with over 6,300 sales. The Transit was followed by its baby brother, the Transit Connect, at 3,700. As some of you may have noticed, these two outsold the top-selling old model, the Chevy Express. Next comes the Ram Promaster, which just eked out ahead of the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. Number five amongst the new vans is the Nissan NV200, which beat out its big brother, the NV. The Chevy City Express and Ram Promaster City round out the list. But remember, those two vehicles just went on sale, so the sales are still small. We know, we know, it's only one month. But this does give you a quick snapshot of the leaders in the commercial van segment. Ford announced the Focus now comes standard with its next-gen electronic stability control. Check out this video of a woman trying to balance an egg on a spoon in an early 1990s Fiesta. Doesn't go so well. Then she tries it in a C-Max with ESC, with better luck, but still couldn't do it. And finally, here comes the Focus with the new ESC system. Success! She's able to keep the egg intact. So how does it work? 
Sensors monitor the car's speed, the position of the steering wheel, and the speed at which the steering wheel is being turned. If it senses a skid is about to happen, the system applies the brake on individual wheels to prevent the driver from losing control of the car. Hey, should Cadillac offer the ATS-V or CTS-V in AWD? The chief engineer of those cars doesn't think so. Coming up next, he explains why it ain't gonna happen. On last week's AutoLine After Hours, we were joined by Tony Roma, the chief engineer of the Cadillac ATS-V and CTS-V. And in the following clip, he explains why those cars are going to stay rear wheel drive. Uh, the current gen CTS-V series and ATS are rear wheel drive. So it's an ongoing debate. I get that question a lot. These are lightweight, luxury rear wheel drive sports sedans. And that's kind of what we're going for. So what would, plus, drive would, plus, be what would plus and minus be of, of all wheel drive? Well, mass is the obvious one. It, it changes the character though. You guys have probably all driven, you know, performance oriented all wheel drive cars and, and they're different. You know, that's the way I try and explain it to people. It's not better or worse. It's, it's a different animal. I mean, I love the Nissan GTR, but man, it, it's, you gotta manhandle the thing. It's, it's different. Um, especially for a car like the ATS-V, we're looking for light, nimble, precise, and those aren't usually characteristics you apply to an all-wheel drive car. Mm -hmm. so. That's right. Who Until knows it rains. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> exactly. There's a lot of great info about the ATS-V and CTS-V in that show, and you can watch it right now on our website or on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to join us this Thursday when our guest will be Chris Reed, overseas chief vehicle engineer for the new Nissan Murano. I'll tell you, there's nothing like learning about a new car than having the chief engineer in the studio. Anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thank you for watching.